Ya, hijita. Hello, dear friends. How are you doing? Everybody. Let's see who else is going to I think only Anna is here. So this is what happens. We are uh, in Mexico. Uh, there's no more changing times. So uh, it means that it is noon central time in the United States and it's 11 a.m. here. So that means we have to adjust to central time United States, which we didn't do last Wednesday. So I'm sorry to have done that. It was uh, an oops, an oopsie. Okay, so I'm. I think I'm going to wait for more people to. Okay. So uh, I think we have enough people, don't we? We have eighteen. Where are you? Say hi. How are you? Okay. Anyway, we're going to be talking about summer projects, spring and summer projects. And uh, that's, that's so sweet because it's, you know, it's still not very high end. Mrs. A, I love Mrs. A, hi. So, summer projects are very fun because, you know, you, you still have to uh, make stuff for Christmas. You still have to make stuff for gifts. And uh, don't stop knitting. Don't stop knitting because it's good for your hands, for your, for your uh, arthritis. It is good to keep moving your hands. And it's good for your neuroplasticity. So remember that it's very good for your brain to keep knitting because you have the pattern, you're paying attention to a pattern, you're paying attention to what your hands are doing, your, your, your brain is working. And so even if it's a, a stitch that you repeat and repeat and repeat, remember that it's a sort of meditation. It, it is a sort of uh, quiet time. Be repeating. So it's like a mantra. So take advantage of it because it's a lot of fun to knit and it's good for your brain. So there. And we're going to be talking about summer knits. And I want to talk first about yarn. So yarn for summer, you don't want to use like wool. And there is very thin wool, very, very thin that you can use for summer because it's a natural fiber anyway. But usually the fibers that we use for summer are uh, cotton and silk. And, the, and there's a combination bamboo and cotton or bamboo and silk, or linen, there's linen, pure linen, or pure, or linen and cotton, which is very nice also. Acrylic is nice for summer, but you have to be careful with acrylic. You need to be choosy with acrylic. You want something thinner and softer, and you don't want anything rough. So acrylic, you have to be very choosy. You want to have like a, like a thin, nice texture that is nice and soft on your hands. So in one fiber, I remember my mother used to make hats, uh, beach hats with raffia. Remember that thing? It's like a plasticky kind of thing. It's called raffia. But uh, I have uh, knitted with that, but it's a little bit hard on my hands, so I don't do that. 
I don't do that any longer. So bamboo and linen. Uh, linen is a very nice fiber. Let me show you something that I make with linen. So this is a blouse that I made with linen. And my mother had it. She bought it in England. She bought the yarn in England, and she had it in 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 a in a box. And so uh, that was many years ago, of course. But she gave me the yarn, and this is what happened. See, I have this blouse. So, and it's nice. It's the stitch is called the drunk because see, it goes back and forth. It see it, and uh, Anna has a uh, a link to this stitch. Yeah, yeah, on Facebook. I gave you I gave <coughs> several links, but uh, this is linen. And of course, you need to put something under that. But you can you can do a whole bunch of stuff with with a stitch like this because since you need to put something in, so you know these little blouses. But they the, how you call them, Anna? What these little tops? So see oh. you. <laughs> Camisoles, they're called camisoles, so you can put something with color under it, or you can have the beige under it, see? So you can change what texture you want according to the color you put under it. Uh, and Cooper is asking whether or you ever use polyester. <sighs> Polyester, yes, yes, I do. Uh, it is not something that's in the market too much. It's more like acrylic. Uh, polyester and acrylic are right? sister and brother and sister kind of thing. So polyester is okay. Polyester is a, a it's not a natural fiber. So. You know, it's uh, it's more like a plasticky thing, but I I don't care too much for polyester. I care for acrylic, but more like natural fibers because those are nicer against your skin. You, you want nice things. You want nice things, even if it costs a little bit more. But you want all your work. You work so much with your hands to make something. You want to have a nice yarn. You want to have nice fibers. So let me show you shawls. Shawls, of course, shawls. I made this one. She's not proud of it. No, I'm not proud of I it. I love it. I don't know why she doesn't like it. She says it goes into the direction, but I like it. She just needs to block it. I know, but it's not something. It reminds me of Art Nouveau. Oh yes, that's true. That's true. But I that's a it. that's a double razor stitch. And let me show you other shawls. So Anna made this one. I don't know if Anna made it or I did. I did. So this one, see, yes. overlapping waves. I think it is. Yes. So this is a nice show, and see these are these are. What happens is that when you knit shawls, you uh, you take them like if you're going to church, if you're going to the movies, and you're going to a restaurant, and you and the air conditioner is like some places are get really cold. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So this is another show that Anna made. Look how pretty that is. See, she has a pom pom. Oh, the pom pom. 
No, these are the butterflies. See how pretty that is? So Anna was did not knit before we went into uh when we started the channel I didn't no see she learned by watching me so this is a show that Anna made look how pretty that is where I where I have instructions for that yet yeah, that's crochet yeah this is crochet look how pretty that is how fun look at this so, of course, a lot of these shawls, some of them can cover you, and some of them are for show. So, that's okay. That's okay. So, and then, of course, you can make the feather. And I, I sent the link of the feather and fan uh, shawl that I made that we have there. You see, this is another, this is a blouse, this is a tunic. Let me get a little bit farther so you can see it. See, this is a tunic, it's long. So it, it adjusts to the width. So this stitch can adjust so it can get really wide and it can get just long. So, and this is a yarn that I inherited from a person so she died and I kept the yarn. See how pretty that is? No, this is not this is not from that person. This is the ladder. Ladder yarn, remember? Remember that one? And I am knitting it with this gold yarn here. So I put the two together and it looks very fancy. So you can knit with two thin yarns together and you can have a, a very nice looking thing like this. And then this, this is the one that I inherited from that lady. And it's really pretty yarn. It's hip. So if you want to knit something, make it kind of a, you know, it, it fancy. You you have all your work there, see. And this is all a, a tunic also. It's kind of long. So since the yarn is heavy, kind of uh, falls into place. See, it has a very nice drape. So that is that. And other summer things that you can make. Look what I made. Look, what I made. Look at the flowers. Remember that we were asking you what, what you thought they were? So look at the flowers and these are the leaves. Look how cute that is. So anyway. The flowers are wonderful. So Anna made these. <laughs> gigantic, you should see the original project. They're all tiny and dainty. <laughs> Very dainty <laughs> and tiny. And, and these are yeah, these are huge. But it's because I didn't have that like that tiny, tiny hook, you know. I didn't have like that. Tiny, tiny, tiny hook to work with. And I didn't want to. I want no. a big flower. Sure. <laughs> so look at look at this guy. Look at this guy. Isn't he cute? Look. Look at this guy. He Oliver. is so cute. What's his name? Oliver. Oliver. Okay. His name is Oliver. So summer stuff. These are things that you can do during the summer. Please don't stop knitting. It is good for you. It's good for your hands. It's good for your brain. It's good for you. And then you can sit and watch a movie and knit. You don't have to see what you're knitting all the time or you don't need to see the movie all the time. Many times I just listen. It's like if I was an audio book Audiobooks are very good 
or when you're knitting because you have the attention there and then you can make things for the house for this is a lampshade look at this is a 3d lampshade cover and it is really really cute this is crochet 3d lampshade cover and this is really really cute so stitches that you might want to use because we already showed several there is like the diamond lace and you also have that one and you also have uh, on Facebook, I sent you the diamond lace and the falling leaves. And so those are stitches that you can use for projects that are uh, you know, open, like lace. So use your lace stitches to make things. So maybe you can make a blouse or tunic. You see these tunics? So this one here, this is the fan and feather one. And they have nothing, I mean, it's it's a rectangle. So the, I, I didn't even bother making uh, anything on the top. I just finished it and then sewed the, the, the sides, see? So there, and then nothing in the middle. And then I sewed the other side. And this becomes automatically uh, unit see so you don't have to be you don't have to follow any strange pattern with a lot of uh, uh, things to do you just need to knit maybe with a maybe with a uh, diamond lace that we have also there and you can use the diamond lace or you can use the falling leaves. Yes. Make a blouse with pretty yarn for the summer. And one of the things that you can do for summer is that use larger needles than what the yarn calls for. So if the yarn says use number uh, three U.S. needles, use a six. So like that, your, your, your work is open. Or if it says a six, you can use a, an eight, so you know, even a 10. So make a swatch, see how it looks. If it's nice, if it stays in place, you, you don't want anything you know, too wobbly. But make a swatch and, and measure yourself. See how wide you want your blouse to be. And just knit it. You can make table runners. You can make placemats. You can make a washcloths. You can make a whole bunch of stuff in the summer. Spring and summer. So, I talked a lot. What is it? Okay. Yes, the rabbit is adorable. This fairy, that's so true. <laughs> Who is visiting us? Let me see. This fairy. Dear Brad, hey, how are you, dear? Susie, hi, how are you? Nikki, all right, from Holland. Ah, we are so gifted to see people from. No, that's her last name, Nikki Hall. Ah, you're Hall. Okay, that's your name. <laughs> All right. So, Nikki Hall. Lampshade is cool, yes. Anna has a video on that stitch on how to make the lampshade thing. I send it to Anna. No, we don't teach them how to make it, but we do have the crochet stitch pattern. Yes, we have the crochet. Well, we don't teach you because because it depends on how wide you want it. So, but this stitch kind of adjusts nicely to. This is for a medium-sized lampshade. 
and it's, it's really cute, three D. So, and then of course the yarn. Make you know this is thin yarn. Remember the shawl, the nautical shawl. That's what we use that yarn for. So we don't have many people today. Fifteen are watching. Yeah, fifteen are watching. Thank you for being with us. Is just come and talk to us. We we like to know what you're thinking. So Susie, Nikki to Ferry. Where's Mary? Mary Lloyd, where are you? Well, Mary, last time she was looking for us and she couldn't find us because we were testing that, that feature. Oh, yeah. Stopped on the other screen, so we never came live on those. And yeah, it happens. And then it was different timing. And uh, it, last time was not very nice <laughs> because we had a lot of the, uh, technical difficulties. Not a lot, I mean, you know, I mean, it happens. So thank you very much for being with us. And Marlene Bolino. How to knit socks? Oh, okay. <laughs> she does not like knitting socks. I do not like knitting socks. And the reason is that socks hurt me. I am very sensitive feet. I have very sensitive feet and the stitches inside hurt me. Even if it's very soft, thin yarn, I don't know what it is, but uh, a lot of people like to knit socks and we do have a video on how to knit socks. We do have one. Uh, there we go. Sock tutorial. Thank you, Anna. Mm -hmm. But uh, having tr trouble knitting socks. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, a difficult uh, task. It's not difficult. It's really not difficult. Once you get the hang of it, and then you you uh, learn how to use either two double pointed needles. Or, or the magic loop and you know easy you just need another you know several tips of needles in order in order to knit in the round I do not like uh, to use uh, double pointed needles to knit socks because it I just find it you know too many going on at the same time. I like the magic loop or use two separate uh, uh, double pointed needles from the same size. And uh, that's what I like to do for socks. But, okay. Thank you very much for being with us. And I will see you next Wednesday at Bowie, Mar Marlene. Marlene, Marlene, Paulino, Italian, okay, uh, thank you, and I will see you next Wednesday, say hi, Anna, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next Wednesday at noon, Central Time, U.S. Central Time, and thank you for being with us, bye.